Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Salim Akhtan Malik, your host at the Observation Post channel. On this channel, we discuss issues of national and international importance. We also discuss defense matters as well as important events from military history. You may interact with me on my channel by giving your precious views. Uh, these are very dear to me. Your comments I value very highly. The transcripts of my various videos are available gratis at my Twitter address, which is at Salim Bakhtar 53. In this session, we'll be talking about, rather, I'll be talking to you about my life as I'm spending it after the spread of coronavirus. And uh, I'm not alone in my experiences. I'm joined by millions of people around the globe. So last year, it started last year when a group of Chinese reportedly drank a concoction, some sort of a soup, exotic soup made from the wild meats of bats, wolves, and jackals, maybe porcupines also. And this was reported by the American media. Whether it was true or wrong, they said this was done in the Chinese city of Wuhan. And these people, by drinking that concoction, accidentally, rather unintentionally, spread or unleashed a virus which the ex-American President Trump labeled as the Chinese virus. Now we know that Trump had no love lost for China. However, China denied it. Uh, the World Health Organization declared that it was a pandemic. Now, I came to know later on what was a pandemic. And it said that a pandemic is an enhanced epidemic which influences or which affects the people across international borders and then it afflicts a large number of people. So this is what has happened uh, to the world. As for myself, I had never known this word a pandemic before. Now, a year has passed and my life, as well as the lives of millions of people around the globe, have changed, changed in a way which we had never experienced before. And our lives, I know, will not be the same again, even when the uh, coronavirus leaves us, when it elects to leave us, rather. I was thinking that my response, as well as the response around the world, has been framed by three idiosyncrasies. These are universal idiosyncrasies. Now, what is an idiosyncrasy? An idiosyncrasy is a thought pattern which is peculiar to a person or a group or a society. So, the first of these idiosyncrasies 
is the human tendency to remain in a state of denial while facing a reality. This is in human nature that whenever they come across a harsh reality of life, they tend to react to it through their sense of denial. And this sense of denial is more pronounced and more powerful than our other five senses, which we make use of in our everyday lives. As far as Pakistanis are concerned, their sense of denial is more pronounced than the people living in other countries. Now, if we take the Pakistanis, which include illiterate people, farmers, workers, bureaucrats, uh, corporate executives. So people from every shade of life, including those whom I call degree holders from uh, various educational institutions, the so-called educated people, they all react or act in the same manner. So most of us say that this so-called coronavirus is a hoax. We rubbish the very idea that such a thing exists. So this is the first idiosyncrasy of ours. And uh, we are not alone in our sense of denial the world over, this uh, state of mind, this thought pattern persists. Americans are way ahead of us in churning out uh, uh, conspiracy theories which are based on their sense of denial. So. I should have told you that uh, sense of denial is always linked with some sort of conspiracy. Conspiracy, which in case of Pakistanis is hashed across the border, that, in, uh, that is in India, or it is hashed by the Jews or by Christians in the West. Now, as for India, which is as poor or rather more poorer than us, the type of conspiracies is different. Their conspiracies are hashed to steal our resources, to get us uh, uh, involved in FATF, etc. Whereas the conspiracies in the West, those churned out or uh, made by the Jews and the Christians are of a different nature. These involve generally uh, asking us or funding us to reduce our population through population planning programs because they think that our population, growing population, the way we breed uh, like uh, rabbits, uh, it, uh, this uh, population growth are, of ours is a threat to the world peace. This is what I think, they, they, for, for which they fund the family pl planning programs in Pakistan. Then the other sort of conspiracy is their vaccination programs. Like they fund it heavily uh, to vaccinate our children against polio and recently against the uh, coronavirus. Whereas we think that these campaigns, these anti-polio and anti-coronavirus campaigns are to change our DNA. And uh, I don't know how, what would they gain by changing our DNA. As for the Americans, they are, as I said, they are way ahead of churning conspiracy theories. And during the Cold War, they 
made us believe that the Soviet Union, that is the erstwhile Soviet Union, which is no more, was a threat to world peace. And as I look back, I realized that the Soviet Union was the coronavirus of the Cold War. Likewise, when President, ex-President Trump of the United States said that coronavirus was actually a Chinese virus, he was actually trying to say that uh, the Americans are afflicted by China virus. Their souls are afflicted by China virus. It is not something physical. It sits inside our brains or more specifically inside the brains of the Americans. <clears throat> so next idiosyncrasy or thought pattern peculiar to the people around the world is their sense of superiority which breeds arrogance. Now we tend to uh, we, we consider it as an offense. Uh, we take it as an offense to follow the precautions to prevent ourselves from coronavirus. We think that uh, wearing masks and observing social distancing uh, is somehow, uh, somehow against our prestige and self-respect. So this is how we behave and this is how we die. Americans and Brazilians are way ahead of us in their sense of superiority and thus their sense of arrogance. And hence, we have seen that during the last one year, they have died like flies. Next come the European countries. Uh, the death rate in Italy, uh, England, that is the United Kingdom, and France was much uh, larger than it was in Pakistan. But then it was not more, uh, due to their arrogance as much as their social norms, the way they live, which involve uh, intensive kissing and hugging. And the last, the last idiosyncrasy is the lack of um, sense of space. And this is more pronounced in Pakistan. Rather, it is Pakistan specific. I'll explain to you what is lack of a sense of space. When I park my car somewhere uh, in a place where there is ample parking uh, space available to the right or left, a person comes and parks his car or his rickshaw or his taxi right uh, behind my car, thus blocking uh, my passage. That is, whenever I try to leave the place, I would have to ask him, please uh, get your car to one side. And he would invariably say, to kya ho gaya ji? Likewise, I get worked up when I am standing or I am passing through a narrow passage, narrow passageway or a corridor, and someone stands right in the middle of the passageway and blocks the corridor or the passageway. He is busy or she is busy talking to someone or uh, lost in conversation uh, on her or his mobile. So this is the last idiosyncrasy. We are oblivious of our surroundings. We stand right in the middle of a stairway 
and start talking to someone. This happens also at the check post. Uh, uh, the check post at the entrance of my uh, society. Whenever I try to, or uh, uh, mostly when I when I come, there is a car driver standing at the check post blocking my way and he's big, busy talking with the security person. Abu Jahl, <clears throat> the famous infidel or kafir in Islamic history was not Jahl in the given sense, in the accepted sense. He was a learned man among the people of among the kuffar or the infidels of Makkah. He was given the title of Abu Jahl by our holy prophet, peace be upon him, because of his arrogance. So, <clears throat> to conclude, I'll talk to you about the Fermi paradox. Now, Fermi Enrico Fermi was an Italian scientist. He was a physicist. He postulated that the apparent size of the cosmos, that is the universe, and the fact that all the chemicals which are essential for supporting life, such as oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and even water are present in abundance in our uh, universe. So he asked himself, if that be the case, then why do we, why have, wouldn't we come across any extraterrestrial civilization? Why have we not come across any aliens except in the movies, in the science fiction movies? This is called the Fermi paradox. And then he answered his own question, his own query by saying that human civilizations, when they reach a certain level of scientific excellence and development, they tend to destroy themselves. And this destruction is caused as a result of nuclear, chemical and biological warfare, epidemics, pandemics as we know it now, ill-advised physics experiments, and an artificial intelligence gone haywire. You may as well include coronavirus in the list. This is how planet Earth will come, uh, the human civilization on planet Earth will come to its end. This is all which I wanted to share with you uh, in this video. We'll talk more about other subjects in my future videos. Till then, bye-bye.